Good morning, YouTubers. This here is a 95 F-150 I just picked up. Got a pretty good deal on it. Uh, problem was it had a strange cooling system problem. A um, little bit of history on me. I've been a mechanic for over 20 some odd years. Um, so I had a weird problem with this, with this I thought I would share because it was a bit odd. Uh, unfortunately, I have it apart already, so it's not going to be a complete video. Uh, one of the things I noticed with it was that um, the upper radiator hose right here, and a typical engine, when the thermostat opens, uh, you'll feel this hose get hot and even a little bit hard because there'll be so much water flowing through it. Uh, this hose was getting a little hot, but not as much as you would normally expect. And same with the heater. The heat worked. Uh, these are the heater core hoses right here. The heat worked, but it was kind of not real good. See back here, they go into the firewall, into the heater core right back there. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, if you if you are checking a uh, upper hose for temperature, that the fan is... Is right there so just be careful because the blades are spinning if you, if you know if you're gonna go ahead and check that so anyway the first night I uh, started working on it of course I checked the thermostat which goes right back here in that hole right there because I've seen at times that uh, they'll open but they won't fully open and what happens with those is I have it sitting right here on the bench um, this copper pellet down here, if you can see that, that copper color pellet, it has like a wax in it that expands when it gets hot. Sometimes the seal goes in there and it loses some of that wax and it will open, but just only a little bit. I did a test on the thermostat and it did open, so it caused me to, you know, check deeper. So uh, that same night, I finally got the water pump off, which is right here. And as soon as I got it off... Uh, you know, it was about 8 or 9 at night. I guess I was groggy. It's kind of embarrassing that I didn't notice this in the first place. But um, I thought that maybe the impeller on the backside came loose. Right here. Because sometimes they do. Sometimes they spin free on that shaft and they just they come loose. So I checked it. It, it. it wasn't loose. It wasn't free spinning. So I was still kind of, you know, not understanding what my problem was. So the next morning I came back in, or not the next morning, the next day after work, I work as a regular mechanic. I had a little more time to take a better look at it, and I looked at it real close, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's literally like a circular salt blade. <laughs> There's no paddles left on the blade, as you would see on this one here. You see here, those paddles you know, facing inward right there, they scoop the water. So this one, they I guess they completely rot it off. And I've never seen this before, and I've done a lot of water pumps. It's maybe common on this engine, and some of you guys know it. But, uh, so I guess it was scooping a little bit of water, but not very much. Not enough to really make the system work correctly. So I wanted to make a quick video about that, because it's a pretty odd problem. Um, because it was working partly, but not like it should work. So it was kind of like a, you know, a half working kind of problem. And like I said, I've never seen that other than I've seen these things come loose and not spin. And I've seen the thermostats open, uh, only partially. And just so you guys know, any of you guys that might be, you know, uh, sort of newer to repairs, uh, you can't see it so much on this old one, but that copper color pellet uh, it always faces the engine side so even if your thermostat sits up like this or down or whatever that that pellet always faces the engine side because when the engine's water temperature gets hot enough that's what makes it react you can also test one of these by uh, this one I tested with a torch just because I knew I was getting a new one. I would never do that to one I was going to keep. If you're going to keep it, or you might keep it, then just hold it with pliers and put it in boiling water and you'll see it open. If it, if it can open. 
This one I just quickly just did with a torch because I knew I was going to get a new one anyway. Which I would always recommend because they're cheap. Um, just another couple point of interest on this job here. Um, this water pump is kind of a pain to get out because, if I can get it here, I'm doing stuff one handed so bear with me. Uh, some of these bolts here, particularly these really long ones, uh, they got to go through a lot of components before they get back to the block. As you can see, that real rusty hole right there. So, let's see how much sticks out there. So that goes all the way through that, all the way through the timing cover here. It goes on the front of the engine. And these, these holes were plugged solid with rust. I actually had to run a drill bit through them. I don't know if you can see they're clean now. I had to run a drill bit through them a couple times to get all that rust out, but those bolts wanted to break in the worst way. So I had to be, I've seen some videos people put out about, you know, how to get the broken bolts out and stuff, but I had to be real patient and heat. Uh, when these were together as a component, like this here, when they were completely together, let's see if I get a better view of that. You see that long aluminum tube that would be created if they were bolted together. I very carefully got it hot with a torch. Now, a lot of you guys might not have oxyacetylene. I happen to, like here. So I put a small brazing tip on the end so my flame would be, you know, a little bit more controllable and I wouldn't burn anything up. If you guys don't have that, you might be able to use the old tried and trusty, uh, just like a little plumber tank. They don't work too good uh, laying on their side. Sometimes they flare up and stuff. Or even a heat gun, which I was using with some success, but it's winter here, so it was it was taking forever. You can use a heat gun. But uh, and then they sell a new bolt kit. I'm going to get because. If you notice, a lot of the threads on these are almost completely gone. Like, uh, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can kind of see it. I put it against a white background. The threads are like corroded away, so I'll probably not get away with it on the second try. They probably will break the second time I ever try to take them out. So when I put the new ones in, I, they're coming. I don't have them yet, but I'm going to um, put never sees all over this part when they're new and, you know, try to do everything I can to keep them things from corroding in there again. Another point of interest, I did a, um, you know, I figured it was a good time to go ahead and do uh, a timing chain and gears. This is the one that came off. I made sure the motor was pretty much in time when I took it off. And, uh, you know, I took the battery cable off and made sure I was the only one that had the keys so nobody would move the engine while I was not here. My dad uses the garage from time to time, so... So there's the new set right there. If you notice, I'll, I'll leave little messages to myself not to, to do stupid things. And last night, I didn't know what the torque value was on the uh, cam sprocket. <laughs> so I put myself a little note right here to uh, to remind me to torque it. Because you don't want to forget that and have things falling apart. <laughs> but this is what they call a double roller set. And uh, it's supposed to be a little bit better. It really wasn't a lot of money, so I went ahead and put it on. Uh, they just slip right on there. There's videos for that if you want to get into more detail with that. But mostly the purpose of this video was uh, just a brief overview and, and that strange cooling system problem. Because like I said, that upper hose should get so hot when that thermostat opens you could barely keep your hand on it. And it was only getting kind of hot. And you really couldn't feel the rush of water coming through there. Um, one other thing was uh, with the this whole job I decided to buy the whole kit which comes with um, this new crankshaft seal or harmonic balancer seal it's the front seal of the motor um, this is the old one right here so it's a good idea to do that too these ones are nice because they got a flange uh, your seal might not have a flange on it like that that keeps you from punching it too deep but you see the flange um, let's see if we get a view of it yeah the flange kind of dictates how deep it can be punched on. Um, if I didn't have that, I would probably take a look at how deep the seal was before I'd punch it out. Uh, so I would kind of know where to put it back again. Another thing is I had the time, you may not have the time to let this sit, but I 
they give you these little gasket pieces that mimic the um, the valve cover, I mean the um, oil pan gaskets. Because right here, if you notice, and forgive me for getting long-winded here, but right here, the timing cover kind of goes on part of the oil pan right there. Right there. So they give you little stub outs, you know, to kind of take care of that problem. One thing to keep in mind, too, is that leads right into the oil pan. So when you scrape all this gasket stuff off of here, and it's going to be hard as a rock if this is as old as mine, or any engine that's old, try to keep as much of that crap out of there as you can by stuffing rags in here like this. This is a fresh one. The one I had was all filthy. Because those big flakes of gasket are like pieces of plastic. And if you drop anything in there that's bigger than that drain hole plug at the bottom of your oil pan, you know, your oil drain plug, that crap's going to stay in there. And uh, I don't know if you guys, hopefully you guys, you know, have had engines apart. Well, actually, I have an engine apart over here. Let me see something. Let's see if I can get a view of the um, oil pickup tube on this motor over here. Uh, do we have it on there? Uh, it might be off of there. Yeah, it's off of there, but here's an oil pump right here. And generally, there's a metal tube that comes off, and it has a, um, a pickup at the bottom of your oil pan with a screen. So any big, giant flakes of gasket, they might get sucked up against that screen and kind of restrict your oil flow, and you definitely do not want that. And the only way to ever really get them out would probably be to drop your pan. But I was going to touch on this gasket thing uh, right here. Let me find them damn pieces. Here we go. So these were uh, parts of the original uh, metal oil pan gasket. And they have a, let's see if I can get a view of it. They have like a rubber fuse to them. See that? So I was going to try to slip some silicone under and around them and all that. And I realized it was just, it wasn't going to work. So I took a Dremel tool, and I, you know, I was careful not to go too deep. Dremel tool with a little tiny cutoff blade, and I just carefully cut these pieces off of there, right off of there, and got rid of them, because I know I got the cork uh, repair pieces that are going to go in their place. And I'm just going to silicone it real good, because I'm going to do an oil pan gasket on this soon anyway, so. But that should get me through on that. Also, I cleaned out the holes, all the threaded holes with a tap. If you have one, if you don't, at least try to brake clean them out. So, um, I think that's about it. Uh, try to post. Um, oh, one other thing: the harmonic balancer here, the crank pulley. Um, the kit comes with what's called a speedy sleeve. If I can find it here in this mess, bench that mess here. The kit comes with a a speedy sleeve. They're called repair sleeve and a little bit of Loctite and that's if you're the groove in your harmonic balancer from the seal let me get the seal for you so you can see what I mean when this all goes together you know the seal will be riding on that portion of it right there so what happens is the seal gets hard after age the rubber in here and uh it's going to wear a groove right here. I don't know if you can see it. I have a very slight groove. Yeah, you might be able to see it right there. So I, I believe, you know, I cleaned this up with a scotch Bright pad. Uh, one of these here. Like a scotch Bright pad. And I think the groove is so slight, I'm not going to put the speedy sleeve on there. So I'm going to elect it. You know, I don't think mine's bad enough to where it needs it. But if you take yours apart and you got a heavy groove in there, and you're afraid that seal's going to leak, then that's what you do. You clean it up, you Loctite it, and very carefully drive this sleeve on, try not to bend it or thin. That should take care of that for you. Um, all right, guys, thanks for watching. I don't want to go too long. I know how I feel when I watch these videos sometimes. I'm trying to get the job done. Uh, I'll try to um, maybe post back on the final product, or if I see any other weird things along the way. Thanks for watching. Take care.